What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're back on actual Pokemon Sword and Shield. The last couple of videos I actually was playing on Pokemon Showdown, but today we're back on Sword and Shield, and it's it's for a pretty good reason. Uh, Libero Cinderace was actually just released, uh, as well as the other uh, hidden ability starters. However, I think Libero Cinderace is going to have the biggest uh, impact on the metagame. And if, uh, yeah, we're on Great Ball tier. That's because I haven't played since the season reset a few days ago. Uh, but I'm sure with this uh, team, we'll be able to get a few ranks up. So if you don't know, Libero is essentially the same thing as Protean, something that Greninja had. And when you have such a fast Pokemon like Cinderace, it, it's really easy to take the game and run with it. So this is a uh, team that I had, it, I just kind of threw it together, but I was playing with it on Showdown as well. It, it works really well. So basically, we're going to be Dynamaxing the Cinderace a lot of the time. Uh, it's running Iron Head, uh, Pyro Ball, uh, Bounce, and Protect. I, I wanted to run High Jump Kick for Max Knuckle, but I ended up opting not to, mostly because I feel like Cinderace definitely benefits a lot from Protect uh, when you're not Dynamaxed. Uh, this Pokemon's very frail and easy to knock out. 75 in both defenses aren't that great. Uh, however... Once you're Dynamax, this thing can take a game and run with it. And since we're not in Master Ball tier, I'm sure we're going to get a couple of wins today. Like, usually I'm playing in Master Ball tier. Um, I'm not going to say that people, like, stuck in lower tiers are not that great at the game. Because it's it's a matter of practice, you know. But, yeah, if you guys enjoy this at any point in time, please leave a like, subscribe for more Pokemon content. This guy is rank 9. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about it in terms of Master Ball, Master Ball tier. So, like, when you're a Master Ball tier, rank means something different. Because uh, it's, like, rank... 1,000 something, because you know, you're trying to get to number one, but yeah. All right, so what we have here is a pretty terrifying Trick Room team, to be honest. I mean, we're, we're seeing this guy with Butterfree and Dusclops. It's going to be pretty easy for him to uh, get his get his um, Sleep Powder off. Uh, however, Grass types do ignore Rage Powder and such, so I'm going to go ahead and lead off with Venusaur, because Wide Lens make it easy for me to put that thing to sleep. Uh, and I kind of want to lead off with Cinderace, mostly because I'm concerned about getting um, outsped by... <laughs> I'm mostly concerned about getting outsped and put to sleep uh, by Butterfree on my other Pokemon. I could also go with Dragapult, but I feel like uh, Cinderace isn't a bad lead at all in this matchup. Or actually, no, nah, nah, that's a pretty bad lead. We'll go with Dragapult this first game. I just really wanted to show off Cinderace. Um, I suppose we could bring into the back. I don't think it's ideal. I feel like the ideal pick would actually be Tyranitar. You know, if we're going to use Cinderace, we're going to use it right. We're not going to bring Cinderace to this game. So you guys you guys are going to have to wait a little bit to see the Cinderace uh, pull something off. I'm going to play a little bit smarter considering I don't want to be in Great Ball tier for longer than like two days. But yeah, uh, if you guys want daily content, uh, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I will not be providing that now. I, I do my best to try to get daily content out, but uh, with summer coming around, I do need to work since I'm not in school. I am taking some summer classes though, but yeah, I do need to work and part of working <laughs> involves uh, doing landscaping for like eight, 10 hours a day. Okay, so I should be able to put this chandelure to sleep relatively easily. Uh, I can go for my sleep powder. Hopefully it connects. And I think here I'll actually just go ahead and Dragon Darts to... Because it's going to be Scarf. Oh no, I should Protect for sure. It's going to be Scarf on the um, on the Butterfree, I assume. Because uh, Focus Sash is usually, you know, usually reserved for Chandelure. Um, yeah, I suppose I can just Dragon Darts here. I, I, I just want to break a Sash on the... Uh, on the uh, Chandelure. And he goes for Rage Powder, which is nice because uh, Venusaur will actually be ignoring that. So here are the Dragon Darts. will be doing some pretty massive damage to the Butterfree. I will preserve my Sash, and it looks like I'm going to KO it, which is actually really, really nice. All I need is for Wide Lens Sleep Powder to connect. Beautiful. Okay, so we managed to prevent the Trick Room. Uh, Chandelure did move last. Venusaur has some pretty good speed investment, but... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, like, I actually always forget Chandelure's speed tier. It's either 80 or 85. Uh, Venusaur isn't that high. It's it's like 80. All right, there's the Dusclops. We have to put that thing to sleep now, and I think now is a pretty appropriate time to max. Here, we'll go ahead and Sleep Powder into you. Uh, actually, you know, I'm not going to max just yet. I'm going to Dragon Darts for damage on the Chandelure. Because, um, like, again, like, that, that thing's clearly Focus Sash. Ally switch, beautiful. Uh, it doesn't really quite make a difference unless he actually managed to get it off. 
There's my Dragon Darts. I'll get damage off on the Chandelure as well as the Dusclops. Dusclops not so much, but um, I doubt he'll do that again. I'm hoping he stays asleep this turn. It'd be incredible if he could not get the first turn wake up with an ally switch team. Because, wow, do I hate ally switch teams. <laughs> like, with a passion. Here's what I'll do. I'll go for a Sleep Powder on the Dusclops. Now that the Focus Sash is broken, I'm pretty comfortable Max Phantasming into the uh, Chandelure. Pretty sure at minus one from this range, I'll be able to knock out the Dusclops with Max Phantasm. And I, if you're going for Trick Room that consistently, like if your whole endgame is Trick Room, undoubtedly there's a Rhyperior in the back, which my low take will be able to deal with pretty effectively. Also, apologies for no face cam today. My room's a complete mess, and I didn't feel like setting up the face cam when that's going to be in the background. Yeah, I have a green screen, but also I'm a complete mess. But trust me, guys, I'm, I'm handsome as hell. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not familiar with the channel, I'm pretty handsome. So subscribe for that when you get to see my face again. <laughs> I'm kidding, uh, but the comments might might make me feel good about myself and hype me up. All right, wide lens sleep powder, please. Thank you. Thank you. Wide Lens is like the best item for Venusaur, just consistently letting Sleep Powder is such a great thing for this Pokemon. Alright, uh, pretty certain I won. Pretty certain I won. I think Max Phantasm will pick up the KO from that range. I'm not Life Orb, I'm used to running Life Orb in my Dragapult, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty certain I'm fine. I'll actually go for Sleep Powder here. Relatively certain that uh, this thing is going to Dynamax this turn. Uh, if not, go for a Protect, so... Sleep Powder into you, Max Phantasm into you. That should pick up the KO. The reason I'm not going for Leaf Storm is because uh, without Dynamax, or without this being at regular HP, like if it were to Dynamax that turn, then it wouldn't have KO'd anyways. But here I can drop its defenses, KO the Dusclops, and then just pick up the KO next turn with uh, Max, not Max Phantasm, but Max Wormwind, because that's technically optimal, but I, it doesn't matter. As long as I land my Leaf Storm, I win. And even then, I still have like my Lodic in the back, so I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be perfectly fine to win this match. Hopefully the game isn't too loud. I'm going to turn it down slightly. I don't want it to be overwhelmingly loud, but there's no way for me to really be able to gauge how loud this game is. I'm hoping I don't have to go back and edit it to fix it, but yeah, I should be fine. We'll go ahead and go for this Max Worm Wind uh, and knock it out with the Leaf Storm. But no, they just end up forfeiting, which honestly they had no outs to win there. I got a nice and clean 4-0. I, I have to be honest, guys. Butterfree isn't the worst Pokemon in this meta game, but it is so annoying. It is one of the one of the most annoying Pokemon in the format because it's either Sash or Scarf, and you need to, you need to figure that out immediately. You can usually tell which set it's going to be by um, by how the team is built. Like I could tell it was going to be Scarf instead of Sash because there was a Chandelure, uh, and Chandelure pretty much always runs Focus Sash. There aren't too many other items it wants to run. Let's go ahead and see if I was correct in that assumption, though. Oh, it was Sash. What was the Chandelure then? Like Berry. Life Orb Chandelure. Okay, interesting. So I guess I was wrong, but still. I, I think the sentiment still stands. Like, Focus Sash is pretty high in usage on Chandelure, and when Butterfree has, like, pretty equal usage between Sash and Scarf, then you can kind of tell. Alright. Of course, there are going to be some of those instances, like me, where I just got that completely wrong. But that's that's just me. I'm not, I'm not the most lucky person in this game. Alright, versus Simon. Alright, let's see. Uh, another Trick Room team, this time with Hatterene as the primary Trick Room setter, and I'm assuming Fake Out support from Incineroar in the lead, so I feel pretty comfortable leading off with Milotic. Uh, it's got a really, really nice matchup versus this team, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty tempted to lead off with Cinderace in this game, purely because if there isn't an, in like, it, like, Incineroar isn't incentivized to show up at all, and I really want to use Cinderace already. I don't care if I lose this match, I just really want to use it. Uh, it looks like Venusaur is pretty good too. I could have brought it in the lead, but I'm relatively certain it's not going to do much on the lead. Uh, let's go ahead and bring uh, Reptar, the man, the myth, the legend here. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking Venusaur. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I haven't had to face too many Incineroar with Cinderace. Surprisingly, it's usually been Arcanine, so I didn't quite miss running High Jump Kick. Um, but it, it's going to be nice in the lead. I'll be able to likely Dynamax and go for a super effective Max Steel Spike with Stab. That's the cool thing about Cinderace. It's actually a pretty relative... It's a relatively good Togekiss answer because you're no longer going to be Fire-type when you go for Iron Head. Like, before, Iron Head was pretty underwhelming damage because you're a Fire-type, there's no Stab. But when you've got a decent attack stat, a really, really high speed stat, and Stab Iron Head, you're going to be a good Pokemon. Like, just look at Excadrill. The only thing is this man also has, like, stab on everything. It has stab max airstream, which is what I'm most excited about. Stab max airstream's disgusting. 
still get Togekiss, man. Like, Togekiss isn't even... Like, it, like you didn't expect it to be an offensive threat. You expect it to be support, and then someone's like, hey, man, it gets max airstream and it's stab. We can run that. Alright, Rhyperior Hatterene. I feel relatively safe doubling into this, to be honest. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be, like, Babiri Berry, which is slightly concerning. We actually do have a better option. I could try to go for a Hypnosis. Um... Yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a, hip a blind hypnosis, mind you. I'm, I don't want to give this thing weakness policy. I'm going to go for blind hypnosis and max steel spike into Hatterene. If it's not Babiri Berry, which they usually are, um, it, then I should be fine. But well, let's go for it anyways. All right, Cinderace, do your thing. Uh, I mean, Cinderace is such a cool Pokemon. Like, before, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I used Inteleon in my initial playthrough. I thought Rillaboom was a much cooler Pokemon than both of them. Uh, but Inteleon grew on me, Rillaboom grew on me, Cinderace has yet to grow on me until now, like, when you give it such a good ability, it's really hard to overlook it, man, like, stab on everything, keep that in mind, stab on everything. Alright, let's see if you're Babiri Berry, there it is, yeah, you can, oh, wait, is it? No, it's not, I think this is gonna KO, I think this is gonna KO, this is a really strong hit, Life Orb, oh, are you kidding me? Oh my god. No. What kind of tomfoolery is this, man? Who was running this set? I'm really upset about that. I'm not gonna lie. I'm really upset about that. I'm gonna go for another blind hypnosis, and I'm gonna go for another max steel spike. That This is the only way <laughs> to deal with that. Or actually, you know what I'm actually gonna do? Um, I'm gonna go for a blind hypnosis, and I'm also gonna max guard, because that'll minimize the damage I take from uh, Earthquake, because... I mean, not Earthquake, but he's probably going to be going for a Ground-type move. And by doing this, I can um, remove my weakness. And then the next turn, since I'm slower, I can go for another Max Steel Spike, boosting my defense on both of my Mons. The reason I'm not going for Muddy Water right here is because I really want to play defensively while this Rhyperior is Dynamaxed. It's going to be in my best interest to do that. And I feel like it's in his best interest to go ahead and go for a Max Quake into my, um, into my Cinderace. Because it's going to boost his Special Defense, it's going to get the KO... I had plus two, I assume, but yeah, it's a it's a really annoying <laughs> it's really annoying to see Focus Sash Hatterene. Let me look that up. What's the usage on Focus Sash Hatterene? I'm just curious. Like, am I just am I just dumb? I'm googling that right now. Picolytics.com. If you guys don't know what Picolytics.com is, it's a great resource for team building. Hatterene. Focus Sash is used 11% of the time. Okay, so I guess maybe. I guess it's just a little bit less common than Babiri, but my, my point still stands. It's only 11%. <laughs> Alright. So there we go. I'm going to change the normal type that's going to remove my uh, weakness. And because I'm slower, I should be able to live a hit from this thing. There's the Psychic. I'm assuming he doubled into me? I don't know why you would immediately attack... Okay, you just immediately attacked the Milotic. So hopefully I get my Hypnosis here. If I get my Hypnosis, I'm going to be real happy. Don't know why you went for Psychic into the... Cinderace because it's not doing that much. I, I would I would have resisted it technically. And I do not land my hypnosis, but uh, I should still be able to go for another hypnosis into this right here relatively safely as I max steel spike for a second time into the Hatterene, boosting my defense, uh, hopefully making it so it's easier for my Milotic to get into Wikiberry range. Uh, if he doubles into the Milotic, it's gonna be really, really annoying. Because that'll mean that while my Cinderace survives, uh, it's pretty much dead meat as soon as um, my Dynamax runs out. Because plus one defense with Dynamax, it, it's going to be living just about every physical hit, including super effective. But I really need to get the Steel Spec off for the sake of Milotic. Milotic with defense is really good. There's the Psychic. And I'm not quite in range. It looks like that's going to KO. Alright, yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. I am going to get my defense up, which is okay, I guess. Um, there's only one more turn of Dynamax for this Rhyperior after this turn. But one of my best checks to this Rhyperior is now gone. I'm surprised he actually went for the Sandstorm. Max Quake kind of made more sense, considering it would have done the same amount of damage. And uh, Sandstorm would have knocked out his Hatterene, which I, I don't quite agree with that play. It doesn't make too much sense to me. Uh, here, I... I don't even know. I guess I can go into Venusaur. 
I can go into Venusaur and hope he prioritizes it. <laughs> There's the Incineroar. Yeah, it's gonna be an issue. Okay, so there's the Intimidate. Um, I am pretty certain he's going to go ahead and take this turn to Fake Out into the uh, Cinderace. And try to knock out Venusaur. Or even just Fake Out. I, I think I'd rather take my chances of them Faking Out into Venusaur. And I can go for a Protect on this turn. Hopefully stalling out some more Dynamax. Or is it my best interest just to double protect? I think it's in my best interest just to double protect because that gives me the most. Um, it, it depends on where the fake out goes. I get the best like amount of stalling out trick room if I call the fake out correctly. I'm gonna say he's gonna fake out into. He's gonna fake out into Cinderace and try to attack Venusaur. So I'll protect Venusaur here and switch out Cinderace for uh, Tyranitar, and hopefully that works out for me. Hopefully that works out. Because regardless, uh, the max ground move is what's going to come out from this thing. Alright, looks like he didn't end up going for the fake out at all. Uh, max Quake into Venusaur. That's actually ideal for me. I'm really glad he ended up attacking into Venusaur. Because this turn I can actually protect with my Incineroar and Heart Switch back into uh, the uh, Heart Switch back into the Cinderace. And actually, that turn was pretty good for me. All things considered, uh, could have been a lot worse. I believe he's only got one more turn of Trick Room. Let me see. It might be two. I really hope it's one. There's one turn of Trick Room. Okay, so here I will actually go into the Cinderace, and I will hard. Hard protect my uh, my Tyranitar. I think Tyranitar is going to be a very important tool to win in this game. I'm assuming a Flare Blitz is going to come out into the Cinderace slot, which is exactly what I want. That's a Hammer Arm. Hello. All right. Well, at least I call the Flare Blitz right. All right, let me think here. Um, I should definitely try to call... Well, he's going to Earthquake regardless. I think it's within my best interest to Rock Slide. Hopefully getting a flinch and try to knock out this... Um, try to knock out this Incineroar. Because I still don't want to give that Rhyperior his weakness policy. I need to be able to get into a position where I can safely get a Sleep Powder off. So here's what I'll do. Um, geez, do I bounce? I don't think bouncing is at all the play. I get the most out of this by going for Pyro Ball, because it's the most likely to leave him in range of Rock Slide, so I'm going to do that. This is going to be a really awkward turn. I'm pretty sure he's just going to Earthquake. But Tyranitar should be able to take an Earthquake. Definitely not a Hammer Arm. There's the Protect. I don't know why he did that. Was he expecting High Jump Kick? Alright. So he's going to do some decent damage. I am Life Orb Max Attack. And I'm thinking you're within Rock Slide range. You're definitely within Rock Slide range. Please. Come on, man. You got this. Beautiful. Okay, so depending on what's in the back, I might be able to get... Like, here's the thing. Um, he's not within range where Leaf Storm automatically KOs, but I think was, he's within range where Iron Head into Leaf Storm will KO. Or at the very worst, I can try to go for a... Um, I can try to go for a Sleep Powder. There's the Rotom. That is slightly problematic for me. Um, I think it's 100% in my best interest to go for a uh, bounce into the Rotom as well as a Rock Slide. Because... Or should I just... Yeah. That'll give me the most bang for my buck, I think. Because I want to be able to get damage off. Actually, no. I should just Iron Head Rotom and Rock Slide. Or Pyro Ball? I don't know. I'm going to go for Iron Head... I'm just going to stick to Iron Head and Rock Slide. The reason I'm doing this is because if he ends up going for Hydro Pump, I 100% take the hit. And I'll be able to uh, get a Weakness Policy rock, rock Slide off. Which is exactly what I want. If he goes for will o -Wisp, that's going to be a little bit annoying. But at the very least here, I have a chance to flinch. Oh no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Alright, come on, man. Hydro Pump. Beautiful. Hopefully he didn't... Uh... 
Hopefully he didn't earthquake, but I'm pretty certain that's what he went for. Because I have no chance of flinching him now. There's the hammer arm. Okay, that's not terrible. Why did he go for... Okay, man, he just lost himself the game. 100%. I think he just lost, lost himself the game. Because I can go for um, Leaf Storm into this Rotom Wash. Calling him trying to keep the Rhyperior safe. Ooh, but Leaf Storm has to connect. That's the only caveat here. I don't think he can knock out my, my Venusaur with anything uh, short of, like, Stone Edge. And I'm hoping that he's running Rock Slide. I have to Leaf Storm into this Rotom. And I have to go for a Crunch into this Rhyperior. Because Leaf Storm will always KO the, the, the Rotom, right? Or, mm, this is a tough one. It depends how much speed the Rotom has. I don't think he's going to be Timid Max Speed. I really doubt he's Timid Max Speed. Because if he's faster and he KOs my Rapier, or KOs my um, Tyranitar, it's going to be an issue. Alright, yeah, I am faster. And I do connect, so that's going to KO. I think I won this match. I think I 100% won this match. It's my optimal play to go for Sleep Powder next turn, because he's not going to KO my Venusaur with anything short of, um, anything short of, like, Crit Earthquake or Stone Edge. So I can Leaf Storm the Rapier and go for Crunch. It's going to be really, really strong, and then, um... I don't give him weakness policy or anything. So I sleep powder. If I connect, I think I win. Even if I don't connect, I think I still have a relatively high chance of winning since Crunch is going to be doing a ton. All right, I do connect. So I just, I think I 100% win at this point. Like a lot of things have to go wrong for me to lose. All right, yeah, no, we win. <laughs> we win with that defense drop that kind of wraps it up. Good game, man. Good game. That was a really scary game. Um, I think Cinderace kind of came in clutch a few times. I, I'm gonna say 100%. The, the turn that won me that game was uh, getting rid of my, getting rid of my um, ground weakness. Granted, he did double into the Milotic, but I'm still gonna say that that was a cool play. <laughs> that's that's the fun things you can pull off with uh, Libero Cinderace. Like that's really really awesome for it. Let's go and get one more game for today. Continue battling here. Libero Cinderace is so cool, man. It is so cool. Like, if it were any slower than what it was, like, I'd say the slowest you think you could make this thing uh, and have it still be good is 110 speed. As soon as it's lower than that, or 111, it needs to be faster than Raichu. As soon as it gets below that, it's no longer as threatening. All right, so we got Triple Ghost, but their third Ghost is not the right one. They have one Trick Room Setter uh, with... What I'm assuming is Gigantamax, Snorlax with uh, Support, Togekiss, and Nasty Plot, Rotom is my best guess. I feel relatively safe leading off with Venusaur. Venusaur is so good in this game. Um, Tyranitar is going to be a huge asset to my to my victory here. However, I want to use Cinderace. <laughs> this is a, this is going to be one game where I'm like, okay, I want to use Cinderace because it's fun. That's that's the only reason I'm using Cinderace is 100% because it's fun. I think Max... I, I'm upset I haven't been able to click Max Airstream yet. I think this will be a game where I have an excuse to click Max Airstream. Because here's the thing. Max Airstream next to Venusaur is disgusting. You end up getting a really fast Max Airstream off. Faster than everything that wants to deal with Venusaur. Uh, faster than, like, um, Charizard, right? So you get Max Airstream off into Charizard. It's probably going to live it uh, if it's Dynamaxed. And then your Venusaur ends up being faster than Charizard if there isn't any sun up. I mean, like, if there wasn't sun up to begin with, because if there's sun up to begin with, Venusaur's already fast. But you speed boost your sleep powder user is the point. That's insane. I love the dynamic speed mechanics of this game. I think it adds a whole new layer to it. And I think it's really, really cool. By the way, guys, comment what you think about Libero Cinderace. I want to know what you guys' thoughts are. I was actually going to release a video just talking about all the news from yesterday, but I'm like... You guys don't need another video with that. You, you seriously don't need another video with that. That would clog up your sub feed, and that's not like anyone would watch mine. Like, what do I have to contribute? Everyone's already contributed. <laughs> Alright, this is actually a great one for Cinderace and Venusaur. Because what I can do here is I can go for, um... I can go for Max Airstream into the Togekiss. And go for Sleep pa Oh. Do I want to Sleep Powder the Tokus, actually? I think I'd rather Sleep Powder Togekiss and Max Airstream into it, because I'm not too scared of Rotom. I don't think he's going to call the Max Airstream. I think he's going to go ahead and go for his Max, or for a Hydro Pump or something. So we'll do that. I'll just double into the Togekiss here. I doubt it's going to protect. 
If it Dynamaxes, then that's going to be amazing, but... Yeah, if I can get the Sleep Powder off, that'd be incredible. They didn't withdraw the Rotom, though, but I'm not too scared of it, unless it's running Thunder Wave. If I run into Thunder Wave Rotom while Cinderace is on the field, I'm going to be real upset. Pokus is going to follow me. I'm assuming a Nasty Plot or something. That'd be great. Max Airstream. Gonna, I always, it always scares me seeing the Libero thing. I always feel like they have like something to counter me, like weakness, not weakness policy, but like the berry that counteracts it and stuff. Like that's, that's messing with me. All right, so now Venusaur is 100% faster than this Rotom, right? So I'm gonna get my Sleep Powder off on this Togekiss, hopefully with the Wide Lens. Yep. Beautiful Togekiss isn't gonna be too much of a threat anymore. Hopefully I catch a Hydro Pump. Nasty Plot. Okay, well you're going to sleep. You're 100% going to sleep, bud. And I'm just going to go ahead and max airstream again into this... Uh, or actually, no, I can max steel spike. I don't see a purpose in max airstreaming a second time um, when I can just sleep powder this Rotom and 100% get rid of the Togekiss while also removing any weakness I would have to Rotom on the field. Because he can go for Thunderbolt. Like, he's probably going to be like, all right, this man's going to want a Thunderbolt. And I, I, if he... The reason I went for max airstream in the first place is to make sure Venusaur would be faster and everything. And by doing this now, I'm able to... Um, I'm able to remove my weakness and also just 100% knock out the Togekiss because I don't think he's going to predict me to have this. But if he's Babiri Berry, it's going to be an issue. It's going to be an issue, 100%. I'm just hoping he doesn't have it. And then next turn, I can max Airstream again. All right, Libero. That's why. That's what I mean by like it scares me because I'm always expecting the Berry because there's always a pause of the Berry. This time there was a Berry, but I should be fine because he can't wake up this turn. And Cinderace is always faster than um, Cinderace is always faster than Venusaur, so I'll, I'll be able to get a Sleep Powder off next turn somehow. Like if he manages to follow me anyway somehow, but he's not. All right, Wide Lens, do your thing, man. Beautiful. Cinderace is really doing the work here, man. It's crazy. Such a fun Pokemon. All right. Here I'm just going to max Airstream again, make sure Venusaur is faster than anything that could possibly come out. Um, I am willing to Leaf Storm now. I am willing to Leaf Storm. I'll max Airstream into the Togekiss. Beautiful. Alright, there's the Libero. Or Libero. I don't know how I'm going to pronounce it. I think it's Libero. Gonna knock out that Togekiss, get another speed boost on my Venusaur. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Cinderace is putting in so much work this first game already. Leaf Storm isn't gonna do it KO because I'm gonna drop my special attack stat. However, um, I'm relatively certain that a second Leaf Storm into. A, what am I saying? A second Leaf Storm. Oh, no, never mind. I was gonna say Leaf Storm plus another hit might be able to do it, but with that Citrus Berry, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit harder. There's the Max Lightning, as it goes for into my Cinderace. Makes sense, because I am Flying-type now. Uh, but I will be able to put that Rome to sleep anyways. Uh, the Max Lightning does make it so I can't put anything next to it to sleep, but uh, Venusaur is already faster than everything now. Like, he has no way of making up for that. Barring, like, a random Tailwind somewhere on the team, which I don't think he can run. Alright, here I will get my Dragapult in, because it just feels right. Like, if... I'm pretty sure there is a Dragapult in the other team. Like, if, if their Dragapult comes out, um, Okasash is going to save me, so I'll be fine. There's the Mimikyu. Okay. So that's slightly an issue. Um, let me think about how I can deal with this. I was originally going to Sludge Powder and Phantom Force, but that isn't an, issue. That isn't an option now. What do they have in the back? Uh, I don't see anything in the back that's really all that threatening. I might fly. <laughs> I might fly. That'd be funny. Uh, let me go for a Sludge Bomb into you as well as a Phantom Force. Hopefully they're not running Phantom Force themselves, because that would cause an issue here. There's the Max Guard. Makes sense. He's trying to avoid going to sleep, but not my biggest concern here. I'm assuming he's... If he play roughs, annoying. Or, not annoying. Uh, that's great, but if he Trick Rooms, that's going to be slightly annoying. Because then I have to switch out my freaking Venusaur after all that work. Unless there's a Snorlax in the back, uh, this Mimikyu's a goner. Eddie Trick Rooms. Makes sense. 
Makes sense. Um, what can I do here? What can I do here? Um, I could get in my... I don't want to switch in Tyranitar because he's going to take a lot of damage, but I think that's my play. Or no, Leaf Storm's going to be doing a ton. We'll just Leaf Storm. Tyranitar I should save for when the inevitable um, Snorlax hits the field. Phantom Force, yikes. Okay, that's not fun. That's not fun, man. But this does put me in a position where I can uh, get a lot of damage off, as long as I don't get paralyzed. Critical hit. Oh no. Please, don't do this to me. Okay. That does KO. I was going to say, this puts me in a position where I can at the very, very least um, get Tyranitar in and go for a crunch on the Mimikyu. Possibly KOing. But now Venusaur is back at regular speed. There's the Snorlax. This is an issue. Um, how do I deal with this? Because he can belly drum up, and that's going to be super, super annoying. I am Focus Sash. I could try to... Dragon Darts, I suppose. And Sludge Bomb. Because both of them will go into the v or will go into the Snorlax. Yeah, I'm going to Sludge Bomb, and I'm going to Dragon Darts, and hope for the best here. Or maybe my play should be to Leaf Storm. It, do it does do the most damage. I think I'd rather have the possible poison. Yeah, we'll, sl we'll Sludge Bomb. And we'll Dragon Darts. Into the Snorlax. Because I'm going to take the hit from the Mimikyu. As long as he doesn't double into me, I'm completely fine. Alright, cool. And now Tyranitar comes in. Which is super, super nice. There's the Phantom Force. I take the hit. Dragon Darts is going to be doing a chunk. And I can just Rock Sled and I think I'll be fine. Yeah, if you don't know, Dragon Darts has a lot of really, really strange mechanics. One of the mechanics of it is, if there's an immunity to Dragon on the field, then uh, it will always go into the one that it's supposed to hit. I'm going to lose my, my boy here, which is slightly annoying. How many turns of Trick Room are there? There's two turns left to Trick Room. I think it's my best interest to... Let me think. I think I should crunch into Snorlax, because I'm pretty sure he's just going to go for a super effective move. And I'll try to Dragon Darts. There's no reason to protect at all. Or even go into the Void, because if I go into the Void, that achieves nothing. Are you Choice Ban, bro? Oh my god. You better not be Choice Ban. He crit me too. If that loses me the game... That just lost me the game. I'm pretty certain I can take a wood hammer from that range. That's annoying. Oh well, though. I mean, like, I still, I still achieved what I set out to show with this showcase. Like, Cinderace is a threat. That's so annoying, man. Pretty certain I would have taken the the wood hammer from that range, because Mimikyu doesn't have the greatest attack stat. Wood hammer would have done a lot, but I'm pretty certain from that range, wood hammer would not KO a Tyranitar. Regardless, though, I, I'm I'm fine with that. We won we won two out of three games today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know what you guys think about Libero Cinderace in the comment section down below. Uh, leave a like if you liked. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications because I do post uh, some pretty pretty cool Pokemon content. And I'm gonna lie, I think I post the best VGC content. Uh, just go ahead and check out my analysis videos. But yeah, have a nice night, guys. See you in the next video. Bye.